Biovivacious. I am Sebastian. Biovivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamentals of biosciences and make the subject exciting. In the previous videos, we spoke about in the preparatory phase of glycolysis, where we have invested two ATP molecules and we were not able to harvest any energy from glycolysis. Now we are entering into the payoff phase of glycolysis, where the main target is to harvest energy in the form of ATP molecules. And also remember that we are entering into the third metabolic pool or metabolic flux. So that is starting with the three carbon compound. What happens in this reaction number six? So I've already written the structure of uh, glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Let us also number this carbon atom. This is number one, this is number two, this is number three. Now glyceraldehyde three phosphate, um, it will undergo an oxidation reduction reaction. So, and this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, we will convert this into a high energy compound that is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Primarily what is going to happen is an inorganic phosphate is getting attached to this. So this inorganic phosphate gets added to carbon number 1. So this aldehyde group will be converted to a carboxylic acid, an acyl phosphate. Then the remaining is CHOH, CH2OP. So this is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now remember, we call it 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate because the phosphate groups are at two different places. At the same time, an NAD, remember, we have limited quantity of NAD in a cell. This NAD is getting reduced to NADH and H plus. This H plus will be released into solution. This is catalyzed by an enzyme known as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, a very important enzyme. So therefore, by making this acyl phosphate, if the energy of this reaction has increased, of uh, this particular molecule, the en energy content has been increased. So this energy we will be able to convert, we will be able to uh, harvest as ATP molecules. So therefore, it is a substrate level phosphorylation. So what is the meaning of a substrate level phosphorylation? That is the production of a high energy phosphate. It is coupled directly to the oxidation of a substrate molecule. So therefore, there is a slight difference from uh, oxidative level phosphorylation, which we will be exploring later on. If the delta G of this particular reaction is plus 6.3 kilojoules per mole. So you need to keep track of this delta G because we will be using it later on for certain calculations. The seventh step of glycolysis is very, very important for us. Why it is important? Because so far we have been trying to make an energy rich molecule that is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. What happens in the seventh step of glycolysis? So 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is uh, acted upon by an enzyme known as phosphoglycerate kinase. So remember, it is a phosphoglycerate kinase with a negative delta G of minus 18.9 kilojoules per mole. Now this kinase enzyme will trap or will transfer the energy present in this uh, uh, COOP bond. So now this energy is transferred to an ADP molecule. That ADP gets converted to ATP. So, and the net resultant product is, this is called 
phosphoglycerate. This is reaction number seven. Three phosphoglycerate is formed. So remember that we began with a, a six carbon compound and this is going to be now two such molecules will be participating. So therefore two ADP and two ATP molecules will be the net result. So remember we had invested initially two ATP molecules in order to prime the molecule. So now that we have balanced it by yielding two ATP molecules in this particular step. So in the combination of this step and the previous step where we produced 1,3-bis uh, phosphoglycerate, it's a coupled reaction. And this combination, this combined step is called a substrate level phosphorylation. Why it is called a substrate level phosphorylation? Because if the substrate participates in an enzyme catalyzed reaction that yield ATP molecules. So that's why it is called a substrate level phosphorylation. Now let us understand in the eighth step in glycolysis. So we are with the 3 phosphoglycerate. Now the next step what we are going to do is we will shift this phosphate group from the third position 1, 2, 3 from the third position to the second position. Now any enzyme which is converting, which is shifting a group within the structure is called a mutase. So therefore the name of the enzyme is phosphoglyceromutase. So delta G of this reaction is 4.6 kilojoules per mole. So that means you understand whether the reaction will spontaneously happen or not. You understand. So therefore the final product that you will get is COO, CHOP. So either phosphate group has been shifted to either second position and CH2OH. So this is number 1, 2 and 3. 1, 2 and 3. You may be wondering why this shift has to occur to the second position. From third position, why it has to occur to the second position. So you will understand the significance of this shifting only in the next step. So therefore, by shifting, uh, what this substrate or intermediate is doing is, it is increasing the potential for energy transfer because we want to harvest more ATP molecules. So therefore, it is increasing the potential for energy transfer by this internal rearrangement. So this is what is happening in reaction number 8 catalyzed by the mutase enzyme. Now we come to the ninth step in glycolysis. So the ninth step is um, to ha again to prepare the molecule to harvest energy, increase the energy content. That is the purpose of ninth step. That is we are left with the 2-phosphoglycerate. Now from this 2-phosphoglycerate, a molecule of water is going to be removed. So one OH here and an hydrogen here, a molecule of water will be removed. So therefore, by removing this molecule of water, molecule of water is removed by an enzyme known as enolase. Enolase will remove a molecule of water. You are left with this molecule. And a double bond is created here and this becomes CH2. So the, the delta G of this reaction is plus 1.7 kilojoules per mole. What happens uh, to this, uh, this molecule is known as PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate, phosphoenol pyruvate. Now what happens with this reaction is, if the internal with this molecular rearrangement the internal energy content of this reaction is increased in reality see either two phosphoglycerate the energy content will be somewhere around minus 17.6 kilojoules per mole that has been increased to now minus 61.9 kilojoules per mole remember in order to make one ATP, we need only about minus 30 only, 
30.5 only we need to subtract it kilojoules per mole in order to make ATP. So therefore the energy content of phosphoenol pyruvate is increased drastically by this rearrangement and this dehydration pro procedure. So it requires Mg2 plus or Mn2 plus for activity. So this is uh, uh, reaction number 9 that is to produce phosphoenol pyruvate a high energy compound. Now we come to the last step of glycolysis another irreversible step where if the energy which is present in phosphoenol pyruvate now we will be harvesting this energy remember this has an inherent energy of minus 61 point kilo uh, joules of energy per mole so from that we will be using half of the energy for making ATP molecules let us see what happens in the reaction so this is converted to pyruvate C double bond O CH3 so look at the carbon numbering also so therefore this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so it is capitalized by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. We will write PK pyruvate kinase. Now pyruvate kinase is an interesting enzyme. It is an allosteric enzyme and it is also a covalently modified enzyme. So we will be looking at how exactly this enzyme help in regulating in the glycolysis detail in the later part of an, an another video. So therefore, here what is important for us is ADP is converted to ATP molecule. Remember, originally we started with the glucose. So therefore, we will be getting 2 phosphoenol pyruvate and we will be getting pyruvate. So we will be getting 2 ATP molecules. So therefore, this is the net gain of ATP. And this enzyme requires Mg2 plus for activity. So most of the enzymes in glycolytic pathway requires Mg2 plus for activity. Uh, in the neg in delta G of this reaction is minus 31.4 kilojoules per mole. Remember that is the remaining energy after making ATP molecule. So um, there are individuals with a deficiency of pyruvate kinase. So we will represent by putting a minus sign those with the deficiency of the enzyme pyruvate kinase uh, they have a problem uh, a clinical uh, medical problem called uh, hemolytic anemia rbc's will be lysed because you see that this enzyme is involved in production of atp molecules so if this enzyme is deficient atp will be absent so now this atp molecules are required especially in rbc's in order to maintain the sodium potassium pump and that pump which is so much dependent on ATP is required for maintaining the shape of RBC so you know that the shape of RBC is bio concave shape and that shape is needed for RBCs after binding to oxygen to move and to you know release oxygen so the process known as diapetesis for that through the capillaries in order to move uh, and to slip and transfer oxygen it needs that particular shape so therefore with the deficiency of ATP the RBCs are not able to maintain that structure so therefore that can result into um, hemolytic anemia uh, also important to notice is remember we radio labeled carbon number one okay carbon number one so therefore in reaction number five we have folded that back into here so therefore this becomes our carbon number one this becomes our radio labeled carbon so keep that in mind this will be useful in future sessions uh, maybe on in TCS cycle we will use the fate of carbon okay so with these 10 steps glycolysis comes to uh, comes to an end uh, in the aerobic phase uh, uh, in the in the system